your life will become a setup for breakthrough. Yeah. Why not just welcome some few people around you to church? Say, neighbor, I want to welcome you to church this morning. Take your seat in God's presence. Look at somebody say, pull me out. Say it again. Say it again. Pull me out. Today is our family and relationship Sunday. But I decided to go this direction. Because I had a dream somebody was in a pit and the person was shouting, pull me out, pull me out, pull me out, pull me out. So when I woke up from that dream, I knew the Lord was sending me on assignment. That there's somebody trapped that needs to come out. And whoever that person is this morning, you are going to be pulled out. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 31 verse 1 to 4. Let's sit together in a chorus, strong voice, want to go everybody. In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Verse 2. Now lift up your right hand as you say this one. Say bow, want to go. Bow down your ear to hear me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge. A fortress of defense to save me. We all hands still lifted up. Verse number 3. Verse 3. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Verse number four. Your two hands up now. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Somebody is getting out. Somebody is getting pulled out in Jesus' precious name. King David wrote this Psalm 31. It is believed when he was persecuted by Saul, the king of Israel, and pursued and trapped. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse number 7 and 8. Let's quickly look at it. Yes. And Saul was told that David had gone to Kenya. So Saul said, this is what the enemy said. God has delivered him into my hand. For he has shot himself in. By entering a town that has gates and bars. Verse 8. Then Saul called all the people together for war. To go down to Kela. And to besiege David. And his men. David went to a town called Kela. And. He went there for good reason. The Philistines were attacking that town and the men of Kela sent to him to come and help them. After he had prayed, God told him, you can go and help the people of Kela. While he delivered the city of Kela from the hand of the Philistines, words reached the, his enemy, King Saul, the king of Israel, that David is at Kela. And Saul said in his, to his men, <laughs> Finally, I have trapped him. Finally, I have caught him. He has entered a city 
that have gates and burglary proof. There is no escape for him. So because of one man, David, Saul gathered all the armies of Israel and said, let's go to Keller and go and capture David there. He has entered our trap. We are now going to capture him and his men and deal with them. Praise God. Amen. And truly, David was in that town called Kela. So words reached David that Saul and his armies have surrounded the town, the town of Kela. We're coming to surround the town of Kela to capture him. In that situation where they surrounded him and trapped him in that land, the Bible says, David prayed that prayer and said to the Lord, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. And in that verse, where he said, pull me out from the net, which they have secretly laid for me. The people of Keller that called him to come and deliver them. They come and help them. Were actually in agreement with his enemy. He was supposed to go to that town. So that they can deliver him into the hand of his enemies. King Saul. It was a secret plot. It was a gang up. They finally wrote. Told uh, uh, King Saul. Your man is in our town. And the town has gates. And has burglary proof. He cannot escape. Come over here. And capture David. We have him trapped in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you need to understand, brothers and sisters, that the enemy is not only a powerful enemy, the enemy is also a cunning enemy. The forces we fight against are not just powerful enemies, they are crafty enemies that we fight against. What King Saul could not do against David by his power now they are using craftiness to trap him there are many people that the devil have tried you in many ways he has not been able to get you but the devil is trying to get you through his craftiness that is why we talk about witchcraft amen when the devil cannot get you by open battle the devil will try to trap you by witchcraft you need to understand this David never knew that he can be trapped. But here they use cunning witchcraft to trap him in the city that have gates and have bars so that he can be captured by his enemies. Amen. When we pray against witchcraft, that is why we pray against witchcraft with so much violence. Because if it comes to open challenge, the devil has no power to stop you. But if the devil want to get you especially we that are believers and Christians he uses a lot of witchcraft in order to trap the children of God be very careful there are some people who are married now Christian sisters that have been trapped into demonic marriages and witchcraft marriages amen the devil saw that he cannot by any way use wicked people to marry you but he craftily trapped you this morning, by the grace of God, you are, that trap is going to break away. There are relationships that, that you enter by witchcraft. It is when you are there, you know that, ah, Satan, don't get me finally. Satan, don't capture me. Hey, I didn't know. When the people of Keller were calling him, calling him, come, 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 come and help us, come and help us. He, did, he thought they were good people. You know, we have no time to look at the story. But David went and prayed to God and said, God, we Saul come and meet me here? God said, yes. And David said, okay, God, second question. With the people of this land that I have helped, capture me and give me to the king. So God said, yes. Amen. God said, yes. Sometimes people you help become agents of the devil. 
that the devil uses to trap you. Now, maybe you need to understand that something. Okay, 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 okay. Let me not rush too much. First Samuel chapter 23 verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. So that you can understand why somebody needs to come out from that witchcraft trap. Then they told David saying, look, the Philistines are fighting against Kela. And they are robbing the threshing floor. Verse 2. Verse number 2. Who is there? Please be fast. God bless you. Therefore David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go and attack the Philistines? And the Lord said to David, go and attack the Philistines and save Kela. Verse 3. But David's men said to him, look. <laughs> Oga, this is a dangerous journey. We are afraid of Saul here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Kela to fight against the armies of the Philistines? Verse 4. Then David inquired of the Lord once again. So we say once again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kela, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. Praise God. Before we go on. If you pray once as a believer and you're not sure of the answer, what do you do again? Pray again. There's no, there's no fault. When David prayed and said, God said, go. And David, go and meet his army. He said, this is, they said, oh God, it's a dangerous journey. Even in Judah, we are afraid of King Saul. Talk less of going near Kela. Those people in Kela, they are friends of King Saul. David said, eh, let me go and pray again. He went and prayed again. And God said, uh -uh, see, go. Amen. God already knew it's a trap. Oh. God knew it's a trap. Verse, this verse now, let's quickly move on. God knew there's a trap there. And David and his men went to Kela and fought with the Philistines. Struck them with a mighty blow and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of Kela. Alright, verse 6. Now it happened. When Abitia, the son of Abimelech, fled to David at Kela, that he went down with an effort in his hand. Verse 7. And Saul was told that David had gone to Kela. Who told Saul? Who told Saul? The people in Kela. The same people who cried to him. The same people went and told Saul. He had gone to Kela. So Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand. For he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. Every gate and bar of Satan that is holding you today is broken. Yeah. Verse number 8. Let's read on. Next verse. Then Saul called all the people together for war to go down to Kela to besiege David and his men. Verse number 9. When David knew that Saul plotted it's an evil plot against him. He said to Abitad the priest, bring the effort here. Now, now in eye open, no saying a dangerous journey be this on a plot. This is a gang up. Oh. Then David said, Oh Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seek to come to Kela to destroy the city for my sake. That's number 11. When the men of Kela, will the men of Kela deliver me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has had? Oh Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said to him, he will come down. That one, that one is definite. <laughs> he will come. That, that, there's no challenge. He's coming. Then David said, serious? Will the men of Kela deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said to him, what? They will deliver you. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's finish up. So David and his men, about 600, arose and did what? Departed from Kela and went wherever they could go. Everybody ran his own direction. Then it was told Saul that David had escaped from Kela. So he halted the expedition. This morning, somebody shall escape. That was calling me in that dream. Pull me out. Pull me out. This morning, you are pulled out. If you said amen, say a better amen. Say a better amen. Take your seat in God's presence. 
So Saul thought he has gotten an opportunity to capture David. Using craftiness, cunning plots, and satanic gang up against him. But friends, if you can pray, you can be trapped. If you can hear God, you can be trapped. What delivered this man was because he can hear God. Is Saul coming here? Yes. Will this city that I have to deliver from the Philistines hand me over to my enemy? Yes. What do I do? Run for your life now. And everybody ran in different directions. 600 men, including David. On your marks, set, ready, go! Everybody scattered and they ran away from the city. That was how he escaped. Imagine if David cannot hear God. He would have been in Kela and suddenly Saul would be looking at him. He said, God lied. God didn't lie. The enemy planned the trap. But God can deliver from the trap. Even if you are already inside the net, God can tear the net and bring you out. Am I to someone here today? Even if the devil thought that he has put you in that place so that you can never come out, God can break it and bring you out. It doesn't matter the, the, the nature of the trap, the severity of the trap, God can still deliver you and bring you out from that prison. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when I am trapped, what do I do? Let's organize a little bit. What do I do? Number one. The first thing you do when you discover that you are in a trap. A trap of sin. A trap of Satan. A trap of marriage. Financial trap. You are inside a trap. What do you do? And truly this morning, I have burden for brethren that are in a marital trap right now. And I pray this night, I told God, nobody in this assembly who is in a marital trap should continue in that trap. If the devil plotted to make your life unbearable, this morning, my God will deliver you. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Hallelujah. God that can bring Daniel out from the mouth of the lion can still bring you out of any trap. The God that can ask a fish to vomit Jonah can still bring you out of the trap. Jonah was trapped in the belly of the fish. But right there in the belly of the fish, he prayed and the fish vomited him out. Hallelujah. Here we see that David was trapped in the city of Kela, right in the city of Kela, he escaped. He came out from that city. The enemy could not handle him. The enemy could not take him. Praise God. Help me look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God loves you so much. There's nowhere you have been trapped that he cannot bring you out. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what do I do if I am trapped? By the enemy, number one, confess your confidence in God. Don't throw away your confidence because you are in a trap. In Psalm 31 verse number one, David began to confess his confidence in God. He lifted up his eyes and lifted his voice and said to God, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. My confidence is in you. Saul and the whole army are on their way. But I put my confidence in you. Though it looks as if I am trapped in this city. This city has gates. And it has bars. Around it. And my enemy coming is the president of a whole nation. But I put my trust in you. Don't ever give up because you are in a financial trap. Because you are in a trap of sin. Like Samson trapped him with sin. Confess that your trust is still in the Lord. Never become confused, discouraged, and despotent because.
because you now realize you are in a trap it is not over because you can still come out God saw you when you were going there should I go to Keller? go the men around him warned him excuse sir this journey is not good oh. say but God said I should go so if God said I should go yeah, let's go the God that brought him there he returned back to the God my trust is still in you don't feel betrayed don't feel let down don't allow yourself to become weakened in faith weakened in prayer in the trap, he was still confident in God. In the trap, he was still confident in God. Inside the trouble, he was still talking about his confidence. Say, my trust is in you. <laughs> huh? You are not a liar. I heard you clearly before I came here. And since I came here by hearing you, Lord, you are here with me. So I confess my trust in you. Don't allow your confidence in God to win because Satan has trapped you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You see, faith and prayer must go together. Faith and prayer must go together. He that believes must pray. And he that prays must believe. If you cannot believe, you cannot pray. And you pray, you don't believe, you remain in the trap. So what the devil will do is to kill your confidence. So that when your confidence dies, you cannot pray. And even if you pray with lack of confidence, it will not be hard. Are you following me now? So the first thing the devil will want to take away from you in that trap is to kill your confidence in God. Because he knows when your confidence dies, you can't pray. And even if you try to pray with weak confidence, you can't be hard. Amen? Is somebody following me around? Because pray, prayer and faith must go hand to hand. He that prays, believes. And he that believes, pray. So the devil uses the trap of life to kill our confidence in God. Amen? It would have been possible for Jonah to remain in the belly of the fish and lose hope. Then he would die there. But because he still has confidence in God, he can still come out. Praise God. It is Papa Yenipo that used to say that if, you, if, if your faith cannot be ruptured, then your destiny will remain intact. If the devil succeeds in rupturing your faith, then your destiny will be scattered. If no matter the pressure Satan brings on you, if your faith can remain intact. That is why the first prayer that came out from the mount of David was, I put my trust in you.